I'm standing here outside the Nordfriedhof in Munich, where perhaps the greatest physicist to never win a Nobel Prize is buried. I'm talking about Arnold Sommerfeld. But who is this man, and what made him so influential? In order to understand, we have to travel back in time to the start of the last century. Max Planck had just ushered in the age of quantum physics. Planck solved a long-standing dilemma that has come to be known as the ultraviolet catastrophe. Up until then, the physics of black body radiation was ascribed by the Rayleigh genes law, which was great at predicting results for longer wavelengths. But this same law predicted that as the wavelength of light decreased into the UV range, the black body would emit an unlimited amount of energy. But this didn't make any sense. It was totally at odds with experimental results. Planck derived the correct form for the intensity spectral distribution function, but in doing so, he had made some weird assumptions. He postulated that electromagnetic radiation can be emitted or absorbed only in discrete packets of energy. That energy itself is not a continuous spectrum, but instead comes in discrete steps. He called these packets quanta and introduced a proportionality constant, today known as Planck's constant H. Planck's constant defines the quantum nature of energy and relates the energy of a photon to its frequency. Without knowing it, Planck had just ushered in the quantum age. At the time Planck published his work, Sommerfeld was already working as a professor. After first stops in Göttingen and Aachen University, where he published an influential book on spinning tops together with Felix Klein, he's recruited by Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen, the father of X-ray imaging. Röntgen asks him to become a professor at the newly established Theoretical Physics Institute at the University of Munich. And it is here where Sommerfeld will arguably make his greatest contributions. With the quantum Pandora's box opened, physicists all over the world rushed to explain the inner workings of atoms. The first subatomic particle, the electron, had been discovered by J.J. Thompson in 1897. And recent experiments by Ernest Rutherford between 1908 and 1913 had shown that atoms consisted of a diffuse cloud of negatively charged electrons surrounded by a small, positively charged nucleus. You may have heard of the famous gold foil experiment. Together with Gilderoy Lockhart, I mean, Niels Bohr, Rutherford devised the so-called Rutherford-Bohr atomic model, also known as the Bohr model. The Bohr model was revolutionary because it brought together the new atomic insights from Rutherford with empirical observations regarding the spectral lines of hydrogen. You see, ever since 1885, the spectral lines of hydrogen could be calculated using the Balmer formula. This formula was further generalized by the Swedish physicist Johannes Rydberg. The Rydberg formula allows you to calculate the wavelengths of the spectral lines in many chemical elements. Niels Bohr's contribution was putting the hints together and combining this knowledge to postulate that the electron is able to revolve in certain stable orbits around the nucleus without radiating any energy. But this was contrary to what classical electromagnetism suggested. Furthermore, electrons can only gain and lose energy by jumping from one allowed orbit to another, absorbing or emitting electromagnetic radiation with a frequency that is given by the difference between the two orbital states. However, it didn't explain everything about hydrogen line spectra. Examined at a very high resolution, the individual lines were actually closely spaced doublets. This splitting is called the fine structure and was one of the first experimental hints at the existence of electron spin. And this is where Sommerfeld comes into the picture. Sommerfeld attempted to expand upon this model by quantizing the z component of the angular momentum. This allowed the orbits of the electrons to be ellipses instead of circles. He argued that if electron orbits could be elliptical instead of circular, the energy of the electron would be the same except in the presence of a magnetic field. This would allow for degenerate states and provide an explanation for the fine structure. Sommerfeld introduced the fine structure constant alpha, a fundamental physical constant which quantifies the strength of the electron electromagnetic interaction between elementary charged particles. And this now made it possible to calculate the fine structure lines. Now, however, it turned out that Sommerfeld's theory, as we know today, wasn't entirely correct. Nonetheless, it was a very important contribution because it still would provide the stepping stone for two major discoveries. First, the Sommerfeld model predicted that the magnetic moment of an atom measured along an axis will only take on discrete values. Now, this prediction would later be confirmed by the Stern-Gerlach experiment in 1922. And this was a 
huge step in the development of quantum mechanics. And it would also help Sommerfeld's doctoral student, Wolfgang Pauli, to discover the Pauli exclusion principle. It also described the possibility of atomic energy levels being split by magnetic fields, thereby providing a theoretical explanation for the Zeeman effect. So in essence, Sommerfeld lays the groundwork on which much of quantum mechanics will be developed. Sommerfeld's second big contribution is not as tangible as his publication, but crucial for 20th century physics nonetheless, his popularization of Einstein's theory of relativity. After Einstein published his groundbreaking work, people were initially skeptical to accept it. As British physicist Stanley Goldberg writes, the only place he seems to have been understood was in Germany, where his theory was discussed, criticized, elaborated upon, and defended. In France, Einstein was largely ignored until he visited in 1910. In Britain, his theories were met with resistance, because relativity was seen as a direct challenge to the widely accepted theory of ether. Now, Sommerfeld was one of the first physicists to accept Einstein's special theory of relativity. In fact, he was one of the earliest adopters and incorporated it in the bohr sommerfeld model. This helped legitimize it as a theory within the scientific community. Einstein was quite fond of Sommerfeld, and their correspondence is well documented. In fact, Einstein is quoted as saying, what I especially admire about you is that you have, as it were, pounded out of the soil such a large number of young talents. And this brings us to the last chapter, developing young talent. You see, Sommerfeld's legacy lies equally in what he produced as it did in who he produced. Sommerfeld was regarded as one of the great teachers of his time. Consider this, no less than four of his students went on to win the Nobel Prize, the most of any physicist ever. Remember the Bohr-Sommerfeld model? In the end, it was replaced by the modern quantum mechanical treatment of the hydrogen atom, which was first given by Wolfgang Pauli in 1926 using Heisenberg's matrix mechanics. Both were his doctor of students that built upon his work, and both will go on to win the Nobel Nobel Prize. Sommerfeld also mentored Hans Bethe, who later led the theoretical division in the Manhattan Project, and Peter Debye, who contributed significantly to thermodynamics. Sommerfeld's alumni list is basically an all-star roster. Other notable students and assistants include Paul Ewald, Alfred Lande, Linus Pauling, Isidore Rabi, and Max von Laue. As a professor, he did not put distance between him and his colleagues and students. On the contrary, he invited collaboration from them, and their ideas influenced his own views in physics. He entertained them in his home and met with them in cafes before and after seminars and colloquia. Some of it left a lasting legacy. It is a tragedy somewhat that he never won the Nobel Prize, although being the person with the most nominations with 84, he never made the cut. Maybe it was because his contributions were less the formulation of new and reverberating physical theories than the application of advanced mathematical methods on physics problems of the age. But it is his body of work that stands the test of time and makes him an influential person in science. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like and subscribe, it helps grow the channel, and thank you for watching.